We're living in the last days of the church age. As we get closer to the time of the rapture, the birth pains of the end times will get stronger and closer together. So how do we live in these days and make an impact on the world around us? It's through the art of continuing. That's coming up next as Arkansas Live starts right now. Um, in 2 Timothy chapter 3, uh, the Apostle Paul writing to his son Timothy, um, uh, let's start with verse 1. We're going to read basically the whole chapter here. And our message is the art of continuance or the art of continuing. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1, this know also that in the last days, and anytime you see the last days, it's talking about the days uh, approaching the second coming of Christ. The last days, we're in those days now, perilous times shall come. The word perilous, uh, I, I've written it down here, means difficult times, dangerous times, a reduction of strength. And we've certainly seen that, a reduction of strength. The Bible tells us to be strong in the power of his might. It tells us that we can overcome difficult situations. Uh, and he says, uh, in the last days, perilous times shall come. They're here now. And then he describes the cultural characteristics of these perilous times. Men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection. That, that encompasses everything from abortion to homosexuality, transgenderism, natural without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good. That's Christian persecution traitors, and that uh, persecution of Christians. For the first time in America now, we are seeing our own government persecute Christianity and persecute Christians. We expect that from other countries, atheistic, uh, you know, Islamic countries, but now the United States, ever since President Obama said America is no longer a Christian nation, that opened the door to the persecution, and that's what's happening uh, now. Traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof from such turn away. For of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women, laden with sins, laden with divers' lusts, ever learning, never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Uh, then he talks about Jonathan Jambres with withstanding Moses. Uh, he said, they resist the truth, men of corrupt minds, reprobate concerning the faith, but they shall proceed no further. Their folly will be manifested unto all men as there also was. In other words, those of you that are upset and anxious and even angry about all the things that are going on in our nation, uh, the Democrat Socialist Party and all the government control and all the transgenderism and all the evil that's going on, don't be angry. And don't be upset. The Bible tells you what to do. But he encourages here and he says, their folly shall be manifested unto all men. So their folly, their foolishness is going to be revealed and everybody will see it. Uh, but you have fully known my doctrine, Paul says, my manner of life, my purpose, my faith, long suffering, charity, patience, those are all the attributes that the church should be displaying. Persecutions and afflictions which came unto me at Antioch and Iconium and Lystra, what persecutions I endured. But out of them all, the Lord delivered me. And all that will live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. So don't think it's strange if you are persecuted for righteousness sake. The Bible said that would take place. Evil men and seducers will wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. 
But here it is. Paul says, Timothy, you continue in what you have learned and been assured of uh, and knowing of whom you've learned them. Continue in what you've learned. Here's the art of continuing. Now, he ends up this one verse by saying, and have been assured of knowing of whom you've learned them. And if you go back over to um, 1 Timothy and you go to, um, let's see, 1 Timothy. Oh, He tells you who he's referring to. I thought I had it marked, but I don't. Anyway, I can, I can quote it. He said, um, the people that he was referring to, here it is, in uh, 2 Timothy chapter 1, not 1 Timothy, but 2 Timothy chapter 1. He said, I call rem- remembrance the unfeigned faith that is in you, which dwelt first in your grandmother, Lois, and in your mother, Eunice. So who was he referring to when he told him, uh, continuing what you've learned, have been assured of knowing of whom you've learned? He's talking about his grandmother and his mother. What you learn from your mother and your grandmother, continue in that, which shores up and blasts and gets rid of this cancel culture, wokeism, all of this ridiculous uh, uh, demonic stuff. It, it blows a hole in that. You know, the cancel culture doesn't want anything that's old. That's old school. No, it's, it's what you've learned from your mother and your grandmother. It's what you've learned from two generations. Folks, don't throw that away. Don't throw out the baby with the bathwater. Don't think that you're going to become culturally elite and you're going to be in the know and it was the latest fad by getting rid of everything and not paying any attention to what you were taught by your mother or your grandmother. And it could be your mother, your grandfather. It could be those that two generations ago taught you. It could be ministers of the gospel, pastors, preachers. Don't forget that. Don't throw that away. That's necessary for you to continue in what you've learned. If you've learned it, now, there are a lot of people that are discovering things they never learned, they didn't know, and so they're, they're jumping on the bandwagon. Glory to God. We have people all the time tell us, Pastor Caldwell, I learned so much by watching VTN. It, it reinforces what they had learned, or it, it reveals to them something they didn't know. And I like to refer back to my what I call my proverb, Something the Lord said to me one morning when I woke up, he just spoke to my spirit and said, what you know, you know. What you think you know, you don't. And what you don't know, you will. And I've held on to that all these years. He said, what you know, you know. What you think you know, you don't. (laughs) Because if you just think you know it, you don't know it. But if you know that you know it, you know it. And what you don't know, you will. If you continue in what you've learned, God has added so much more uh, to my knowledge uh, concerning the Word of God. Uh, Let's go back to 2 Timothy 3 and finish reading this. He said, continue in the things which you've learned, have been assured of, and, and I'll tell you what that means, knowing of whom you've learned them. And that from a child, this is so important, from a child you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise unto salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. That's our end goal. The end result is that the man of God, woman of God, might be thoroughly furnished unto all good works, to be perfected. So why should you continue in what you've learned? 
so you can be perfected. Don't jump on just the latest fad, spiritual fad, fa spiritual fad doctrine. The, uh, you know, don't, don't, don't hook your wagon to the stars. What, continue in what you've learned. And we're going to talk about that. Continue in sound doctrine. You know, if, if you hear something that's contrary to what you've learned, what you've known, just throw it out. Put it on the shelf. Forget about it. Don't, don't bother yourself with it. There are too many people following the leader, so to speak, because it's the newest thing. It's the latest thing. Oh, I've got to get this. I've got to get this. If you know something and you've been taught, stay with it. What you learn from your mother, your, your grandmother, your grandfather, uh, your pastor, stay with it. Uh, let's define perilous times here because Paul starts off telling Timothy, this know also that in the last days perilous time. It means a reduction of strength. It means difficult, dangerous. We're living in that time right now. Continue in sound doctrine. Continue in what you've learned. Go with me over to Joshua chapter 1. I think I have that mark. Yeah, Joshua chapter 1, and let's look at verse 1. Joshua 1, verse 1. This is worth reading. Now, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, you and all your people, into a land which I do give to them, even the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon, that have I given you, as I said to Moses. From the wilderness and, the, and this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, and all the land of the Hittites, and unto the great sea toward the going down of the sun, shall be your coast. Now here's the charge. There shall not any man be able to stand before you in all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, I will be with you. I will not fail you or forsake you. Be strong and of good courage. For unto this people shall you divide for an inheritance the land which I swore unto them and to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous that you may prosper to uh, prosper, that you may observe to do according to all the law which Moses, my servant, commended you. Turn not from the right hand or to the left, that you may prosper wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate therein day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written therein. And then shall you make your way prosperous and you shall have good success. Have I not commanded you? And he repeats it. Be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid, neither be dismayed. For the Lord thy God will go with you wherever you go. So this word perilous times, it also includes a reduction of strength. The Bible says that we are to be strong and of good courage. And if you're, if you're not wise, if you, if you don't pay attention, you, and if you follow just anything that comes down the pike, and you'll get weaker and weaker and weaker. And you have to stay strong. He said to, told Joshua. And Joshua was a great leader because Joshua was a great follower. Joshua was very faithful to Moses. And when Moses died, Joshua took over from there. And God said, as I was with Moses, I will be with you. The, sa the same God that was with Moses is now with Joshua. Nothing's changed except the circumstances. <laughs> the assignment's still the same. The anointing's still the same. Uh, the word of God is still the same. So you should stay the same. You know, there's security in, um, oh, and stability in continuing in what you've learned. Uh, I was very blessed over the years. Jeannie and I pastored for 37 years. I was very blessed over the years when people would tell us, you know, pastor, we feel secure. We feel, we feel safe. 
coming to this church, a member of this church. Why? Because we know that you're watching for our souls. And we know that you're not going to uh, let any false doctrine or false creed. You, you don't go up and down and up and down. You're just a steady plane. That is a compliment, my pastor friends. That is what people are looking for. It, it doesn't mean that they, they don't want to grow and that they want to stay the same humdrum, blah, blah, blah. It means that they want to be secure and safe knowing that you're watching for their souls and that you're going to make sure that, that you don't feed them any false doctrine or you're not going to have anybody in that will feed them false doctrine. So perilous times, reduction of strength. God told Joshua, he said, Joshua, I want you to know that I'm going to be with you <laughs> and I'm going to uh, do what I said. I'm going to lead you into the promised land. But you have to be strong and of good courage. Now, let's go over to 1 Timothy chapter 4 and let's read uh, verse 16. 1 Timothy 4 verse 16. Uh, still Paul talking to Timothy. Take heed unto yourself and unto the doctrine. Continue in them for in doing this you shall both save yourself and them that hear you. Doctrine is instruction. And he said, continue in the instruction that you have received. In second, the second epistle that he wrote uh, to Timothy, he said, continue in what you've learned. Continue in sound instruction. Uh, you know, my, my dad taught me this growing up as a boy. Not only did he model it, but he taught it. And he used this example one time. My dad was a real, my dad was a real sharp dresser. Uh, I mean, he always looked his best. Of course, he worked for a corporation for 25 years. And he was an executive vice president. And he, he worked in an environment uh, that was, you know, conducive to that. But my dad always wore uh, his very best. Now, he, he was raised during the Depression, so he, he knew what it was to do without. <laughs> but when he worked hard and he made money and he was able to provide for his family, he began to uh, enjoy some of the fruit of his labors. He even got to the point later in his life where he would have his suits tailor-made. He, he had a tailor that would make his suits. But if you go to my dad's closet, and sometimes, and my dad, at one time when I was growing up in high school, I, I could wear his clothes. I was getting to be about his size. I, I couldn't wear his shoes. He, he had little feet. I have big feet. He, but I could wear his clothes. I could wear his coats. And uh, I would sometimes, by his permission, <laughs> sometimes he'd tell me, you've been in my closet. <laughs> I'd wear his ties and his suits. But my dad, he dressed very well and always dressed uh, uh, up. And he taught us to do the same thing. And I remember one time, and of course, he had, he had shoes. He had suits, ties, shirts jewelry. Uh, after, uh, before he died, he sent me all his jewelry. Now, his jewelry wasn't really expensive. It was what you call costume jewelry, but it was, it had a wide range of choices. I mean, cufflinks, and watches and so forth. And he sent all that to me. And uh, he told me one time, he said, you know, there's a difference between fads and fashion. I said, oh, what's the difference? He said, fads come and go. They're always coming and they're always going. Doctrine has fads. The Bible says, beware of the winds of doctrine. Don't be tossed to and fro by every wind of doctrine. Uh, uh, there, there are winds of doctrine that blow through and blow out. They're, they're not uh, biblically based. Uh, they're not uh, built on stability. They can't be supported by Scripture. 
they're a, they're a spiritual uh, fad. They come and they go. And boy, I've been around long enough now that I have seen these things come and go. And I don't want to get off into those and, and go over what they were or what they are. But they're still going on. There will always be winds of doctrine. But you just stop and think. Things that you heard taught or that you thought were the truth, the thing 10 years ago, 20 years ago, five years ago, where are they now? They're gone. They blew in and they blew out. They had no substance to them. They weren't from God. There was no foundation for them and they didn't last. But I, I would guess thousands, maybe millions of people got seduced by them. They followed them. And my dad told me, he said, the difference between fad and fashion is fads come and go and fashion never goes out of style. It never changes. So he said, remember this, when you start dressing yourself, if you will stay in fashion, you, you can wear the same type suits, shoes, uh, whatever, uh, continually. And daddy bought good suits, good stuff, good shoes. Uh, he, and he had his suits at, at, at the end of his uh, working career. He was having suits tailor-made just for him out of good material made by uh, good tailors. And he would buy uh, nice shoes. Of course, you know, this was back in the 60s, uh, late 50s, early 60s. But nevertheless... It was fashionable. It never changed. It always stayed the same. He was always in fashion. He never gave place to fads where, where clothes, were, clothes were concerned. And as spiritually speaking, if you take this over and apply it to, to the spiritual, God told Timothy, he said, continue in the doctrines that you've learned. Continue in them. I think sometimes people get tired of continuing in things. They just want something new. They just impulse buying, impulse whatever. <clears throat> they just say, oh, I, I want to try this. I want to try something new. And they get in trouble uh, because it, when you get out from under God's covering and God's anointing, you're an open target for the enemy and he can push you into effervescence. He may not get you to go into rank sin, but he can push you into effervescence, which is a false bubbling. And, and you know, you can, buy these, uh, you can buy these drinks in the grocery store uh, that have carbonation to them. But it's all, uh, in, it's all manufactured carbonation. Uh, it's, n it's not real. It's not from a, a spring that has bubbling water. It's, it's all induced in the bottling plant. They pump air into it. So, you know, it's, it's the same spiritually. You can be uh, seduced by spiritual fads, false doctrine, but the Bible tells us to continue in what we've learned. If salvation is by grace through faith in Jesus Christ, if salvation was by grace through, through faith in Jesus Christ in the 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, it's still applicable, applicable today. Salvation is still by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. There is no other way to be saved. Jesus is the only way to salvation. So don't let some spiritual fad I don't care who's doing it. You know, just because somebody's on television every day or every week and <clears throat> they got a big name or they got lots of books doesn't mean that everything they teach is right. Doesn't mean everything they know is right. Just stick with the word. I used to tell our congregation all the time, don't take my word for it. Get in the Bible for yourself. Find out what the scripture says. So Paul says to Timothy, continue in sound doctrine. Okay, let's go over to 2 Timothy 4, and let's look at verses 1 through 4. I charge you, therefore, before the Lord God and Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing 
and his kingdom, preach the word, be instant in season, out of season. In other words, when it's popular, when it's not popular, preach the word in season, out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. This is what I was talking about a while ago, but after, but they will, um, but after their own lust, they will heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. In other words, oh, have you heard the latest? I'm going to listen to brother so-and-so or sister so-and-so. I'm, I'm, I'm going to go to that church. I'm going to hear what they have to say. I'm going to read their books. I'm going to teach what they're teaching. They heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. That word fables means fairy tales. It's, it's not true. But you, Timothy, watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of your ministry. <clears throat> in other words, let your ministry prove itself. Uh, the Bible says, by their fruit you shall know them. Watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of your ministry. The marginal reference says uh, of no, uh, oops, I missed that one. Fulfill, fulfill your ministry. And then he goes on and says, I am now ready to be offered and the time of my departure is at hand. I fought a good fight. I finished my course. I've kept the faith. This was Timothy. I mean, this was Paul's way of signing off to Timothy. Uh, just like God told Joshua, I'm going to be with you as I was with Moses. God's saying the same thing to Timothy, but he's telling him, you need to follow the truth and the word. Now we'll pick this up here tomorrow, the art of continuance. Remember, Jesus is Lord of Arkansas and wherever in the world you're watching too. Send your questions, comments, and testimonies to Happy Caldwell at Post Office Box 26207, Little Rock, Arkansas, 72221, or email happycaldwell at vtntv.com. Remember to follow VTN on Facebook at VTN Your Arkansas Christian Connection, and follow Happy Caldwell on Twitter at happy underscore Caldwell. VTN is on Roku. Search VTN in the channel store and add us to your lineup. Today's episode is available to watch on demand at VTNTV.com and click watch. You can also watch VTN via live stream at VTNTV.com.